In this video, we will show you how to do a polynomial regression of data in Excel. The data that we're going to use today is given in this Excel worksheet. If you look at this, it gives you the years from 1975 to 2009, and it gives you the newspaper revenue from classified ads in billions of dollars. If you look at the data, you'll notice that the, that the values go up until about 2000 and then they then they then they begin to fall. So this suggests that we are going when we do the regression that we're going to have to do a regression that is a higher order than linear. To generate the B column, which is the number of years since 1975, we can use Excel. How to do this? Well, we're going to type in the B2 cell equals a2 minus 1975. So in the B2 cell, we have the number of years since 1975 for 1975, which is simply zero. We can replicate that by just pulling and dragging and dropping. So what we're interested in doing now is, is, is doing a regression on the data that is highlighted. To do the regression, to do the polynomial regression, we go to the top and we pick insert. Okay. Under insert, we're going to pick the scatter option. And under the scatter option, we're going to pick the scatter with only markers. If you look at this data, you'll notice that the data is not linear. but in Excel, if you want to do a regression, the first regression that you have to do is the linear regression. So we go ahead and we click this graph, and then we click on the third layout. If you look at the data, again, you notice that the linear regression is not doing a very good job of fitting this data. To get more information, we double-click on the linear regression line. When we do that, it brings up this particular view. So to display more information, we click on display equation on chart and also display R squared value on chart. I'm going to go ahead and select this and make it bigger so we can see it. So I'm going to bring it up to, let's say, 16 point. So this is the regression information. When we regress this data using the linear regression, this is the, if you like, the best fit line and then our R squared, which gives us a measure of how well the regression is doing, is 0.3817. Remember that R squared goes between minus 1 and 1. Okay, minus 1 and positive 1 are, occur when the all of the data falls on the line. We have an R squared value of 0.3817, which isn't that good, which again tells us that uh, the linear regression is not doing a very good job. So what we want to now do is try to do, instead of a linear regression, do a quadratic regression. So again, we, we select the data. We go to Insert. We go to Scatter. Click on Scatter. And we choose Scatter with only markers. We put it right. We'll drag it over here so we can see it. OK. Click on that. We go pick Layout 3. We double click on the line, and then we come over here where it says polynomial, and we choose it to order second. And we also want to display the equation on the chart and display our squared value on the chart. Take that, that value here again, the information I'm going to pull it up here, make it a little bit bigger so that we can see it. So here is the information for the quadratic regression. If you look at this, it gives you the equation of the line here. Right? So the equation of the line here is y equals minus 0.0303x squared and so forth. And then the r squared is 0.6903. You notice that the r squared here is bigger than the r squared here, which indicates that the quadratic regression is doing a better job of fitting the points than the linear regression. 
When you look at the graph, you'll notice that there's some points out here where the graph, where the, where the quadratic regression is not doing that good a job. So what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to do a cubic regression, which is another way of saying we want to do a regression where the polynomial, instead of being order second, is now going to be order third. Pick the data. Click on Insert. Scatter. Put it over here. Drag it over there. We're going to double click again. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to click on the layout three, which gives us this. Get rid of that. And now we want to do a polynomial regression of order three, and we want to display the equation and the r squared value on the chart. I'll make them bigger so that you can see them. 16. Sorry, wrong. 16. All right. So here is the equation of a line that is right there. You'll notice again that it's third order or cubic, and r squared is now 0.9023. Okay, that's pretty good. An r squared of 0.9023 is a fairly high r squared, which says that the the um, regression that we have here, right, the fit that we have here, which is cubic, is doing a good job of fitting our points. Let's do one more. Let's do a quartic, which is a fourth order regression. Kind of running out of room. We'll put it right there. Click on it. Now, if you look at this one, this one does a really good job. I mean, I like the fourth order regression better than the third order regression. So there is the regression, the equation, the regression equation right there. And you'll notice that r squared is 0.9734. Remember that the, 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 the largest that r squared can be is 1 and minus 1. So an r squared of 0.9734, which is almost 1, is very close to 1, which means that this regression is doing a very good job of fitting the points. So by looking at this, I would go ahead and choose the, um, the, the quartic regression. Now we could take this and look at doing a fifth order polynomial regression, but that's not going to do a much better job than a fourth order polynomial regression. When you're doing regression, you want to pick the lowest order that tends to do a pretty good job. Okay, um, In this case, it's going to be the quartic, quartic or the fourth order regression. Right. Um, to just kind of finish things out, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to label these axes with what they're representing. And I can just do a cut and paste from Excel into the, into the axis title. And kind of move it around a little bit and make it a little bigger. Look at it. Okay. So here again, this is our regression. It's regressing the newspaper revenue from classified ads and billions of dollars versus the number of years since 1975. If you look at this, you'll notice that up to about what 2000, um, maybe a little bit, a little bit past that. The, the uh, newspaper revenue from classified ads was, was growing. After that point, it began to fall. And this is being caused mainly by the, the uh, internet. What's happening is that people are opting more and more to put their advertisements on the internet as opposed to in newspapers. This concludes our video on using Excel to do polynomial regression.